the T-54 series of Soviet main battle tank came about in the search for a viable replacement for the war-winning T-34 medium tank of World War II. The T-34 itself was a proven commodity in the conflict and appeared as a nasty surprise to German tanker crews and anti-tank teams alike. The T-34 was a highly regarded yet crude battlefield implement that utilized a skillful combination of speed, firepower, and armor protection which ultimately put the Germany army on the defensive for the duration of the war. The T-34 went on to be produced in over 84,000 examples from 1940 to 1958, and served many nations well into the Cold War years thereafter, some even fielding the type today. To that end, Soviet engineers attempted several initiatives to replace the utilitarian-minded, though highly effective, T-34 design with a more modern, refined, and reliable type. One such attempt became the 85mm Arm T-44 that, despite entering service in 1944, did not see any notable combat action in World War II and was further dogged by mechanical unreliability, limiting total production to approximately 1,800 examples. The Soviet Army favored the 100mm main gun instead and the this, along with the end of the war, signaled the end of the T-44 for the long term. Nevertheless, a parallel design emerged as a more reliable replacement and this version mounted the desired 100mm main gun. The tank was designated as the T-54. Design of the new tank began in late 1944 to which a prototype emerged in February of 1945. Subsequent trials proved promising enough that the design was formally accepted into service by the Soviet Army thereafter. The war in Europe was over in May of 1945. While the Russo-Japanese War spanned only a short time from August to early September with the Soviets earning the victory. Work continued on the T-54 as a possible replacement for the fabled T-34 series. The T-54 was built around the 100mm D-10 series main gun, instantly making it one of the most powerful frontline combat tanks in consideration, when compared to Western developments of the time. The T-54 improved upon armor protection over that of the T-34 and was given a new transmission system as well as a new engine. Wartime Red Army experience in armored warfare naturally made their way into the design. After several design revisions and numerous engineering fixes, the T-54 emerged in an evaluation form as the T-54-1 in 1946. With evaluation of the T-54 system still underway, the Soviet authorities formally ordered the tank into quantitative serial production in 1947. The T-54 became operationally available in the Red Army inventory in 1949. Outwardly, the T-54 was a decidedly Soviet tank design featuring a well-rounded cast steel turret emplacement mounting a 100mm main gun. The look was not unlike that as featured on the wartime Joseph Stalin series of heavy tanks fielded against the Germans. The 100mm main gun barrel was relatively featureless and not capped by a muzzle brake. The gun was ranged, with good penetrative capabilities, out to target some 1,000 yards away, its only structural misgiving being the limited downward traverse, a noted deficiency which restricted use of the hull down firing tactic. Up to 34x projectiles of 100mm ammunition could be carried, and this ran the standard gamut of high explosive and armor piercing rounds. Ammunition was stored in the turret as well as throughout the hull. Air defense was provided for via a 12.7mm DCK anti-aircraft heavy machine gun located at the loader's hatch. Further defense came from a 7.62mm SG coaxial machine gun fitted in the turret alongside the main gun armament, operated by the gunner. A rather novel design feature included machine guns fitted to the fenders for additional anti-infantry defense. Structurally. There were five large road wheels adorning either track side with the frontmost pair set noticeably ahead of the rearward set wheel pairs. The drive sprocket was fitted at the rear with the track idler at the front. No track return rollers were implemented into the track design. The hull superstructure was of a relatively low profile while the glassy plate was well sloped, contouring nicely into the hull roof. Crew accommodations consisted of the driver, tank commander, driver, and main gun loader, the bow-mounted machine gunner, radio operator crewman common to most World War II tanks had fallen out of favor by this point. The driver maintained a front left position in the front hull while the commander, gunner, and loader were situated in the turret with the former group at left and the latter at right. 
the engine was fitted to the rear of the hull and consisted of a single V-54 series 12-cylinder water-cooled diesel engine developing 520 horsepower. Construction of the hull was of an all-welded design, and overall weight fell just under 40 short tons at 39,700 kilograms. A very fundamental tank design, any student of World War II could appreciate the design lines of the T-54. All told, the T-54 offered up much more direct line firepower and field armor protection than her predecessor which was all the Red Army could have hoped for, particularly in its daily attempt to upstage any armor developments occurring in the West. Cross-country mobility was deemed rather excellent and the power-to-weight ratio was something of note. The T-54-1, appearing in 1946, was identified by its well-contoured curved turret assembly as well as its wide gun mantlet. The D-10T main gun was not stabilized so, firing on the move, with any level of accuracy was near impossible. This version also stowed 7. 62mm SG, 43 series machine guns on the fenders for improved defense against infantry but their tactical value was questionable. Production of this model was limited at best and primarily as set aside for evaluation purposes rather than operational service. The few that were completed showcased some severe quality control issues that reflected poorly on the project as a whole. T-54-1 production lasted until 1948. In 1949, the T-54-2 was unveiled and showcased a revised turret assembly with flattened side facings, a rear overhang and a dome-shaped roof. The tracks were widened for better ground displacement while the transmission system was reworked for the better. The fender-mounted 7.62mm machine guns were removed in favor of a more conventional bow-mounted emplacement to be managed by the driver. Production of this form lasted until 1952. A modernized version eventually added the ZET, 1 Series Vehicle Protection Suite to help increase battlefield survivability noted by netting cast around the main gun. In 1952, the T-54-3 was brought online and displayed an oval, curved turret assembly. The gunner sight was upgraded to the Tisha 2-22 series system. An engine-based smoke screen generator was instituted which allowed the T-54 to create its own smoke and cover its maneuvers to an extent. The system simply relied on raw diesel being injected into the engine, thusly producing the desired result. Production lasted until 1954, while Polish factories produced a local breed from 1956 to 1964. The T-54A appeared in 1955 and finally added a main gun stabilizer across the vertical plane. This, in effect, redesignated the original D-10T tank gun to D-10TG. A snorkel was now standard and this allowed the T-54 some amphibious capabilities that previous versions lacked. Other additions included an infrared headlamp, new telescopic sighting device, new radio equipment, revised engine air filter, automatic fire extinguisher and an infrared periscope at the driver's position. The barrel was given a counterweight to contend with recoil but this later gave way to a bore evacuator within time. Extra fuel tanks were also utilized to help increase operational ranges. The T-54A was produced until 1957. Poland manufactured the type from 1956 until 1964. Similarly, localized Czech production spanned from 1957 until 1966. China produced this version of the T-54 as the Type 59 though it eventually proved inferior in any way to the original. The T-54B, then followed in 1957 and key to this development was its inclusion of a two-axis main gun stabilization system, which increased firing accuracy when on the move. The gun was further redesignated to D-10T2S. In 1959, the series was given true infrared night vision fighting performance which allowed the T-54 to operate in day and nighttime environments. This version was given the NATO codename of T-54M to signify the changes. T-54B production spanned into 1958. In the mid-1950s, a major revision to the T-54 line produced the visually similar T-55 main battle tank. The tank was fitted with a new engine, thicker armor protection and basic nuclear biological chemical NBC, protection for the crew. Production of the T-55 commenced in January of 1958. 
The arrival of the T-55 created the T-54M designation of the mid-1960s, which marked T-54 production models brought up to the new T-55 standard. Further modernization efforts throughout the 1960s created the T-54AM designation, which introduced more internal space for projectiles as well as new radio equipment. The engine was a new version of the same V-55 series system. Another modernization of the series was sparked in 1977, which added the OPVT Snorkel and KTD-1 series laser rangefinder. Additional T-54 versions were used as test beds for various developmental armaments. The T-54 was also modified as a command tank with extra communications equipment taking the place of five 100mm projectiles. The command tanks were noted within four distinct variant forms known as the T-54K, T-54AK, T-54BK, and T-54MK series, each with their own sub-variants. The T-54K included the T-54K1 and T-54K2. The T-54AK was made up of the T-54AK-1 and T-54AK-2. The T-54BK involved the T-54BK-1 and T-54BK-2. The T-54MK consisted of the T-54MK-1 and T-54MK-2. The K-1 and K-2 designators simply identified the additional radio equipment in the K-1 models, and the use of a telescoping mast in the K-2 models. Like other high-quantity production battle tanks, the T-54 series was produced beyond the requisite combat and command forms. This included the Armored Recovery Vehicle ARV, the AVLB Bridge Layer, and the IMR Combat Engineering Vehicle. A flame projecting tank was also recognized as was a mine-clearing vehicle. To this day, the T-54 is still fielded in numerous quantities globally and these have seen substantial combat actions throughout a variety of environments. Most customers were accordingly Soviet allied nations and states such as China which went on to produce a near copy of the T-54 as the aforementioned Type 59. While an excellent tank system for its time, one must consider the World War II origins of the machine on today's technologically hungry battlefield. Despite the pedigree of the famous T-34, the T-54 is largely inferior to its contemporaries in the West and elsewhere. In any case, the T-54 will most likely still manage a battlefield existence for some time to come, thanks in large part to the overwhelming production figures associated with the family line. Various modernization programs, including addition of an external laser rangefinder and improved searchlights and sights, instituted by a variety of its owners over the years have certainly helped to keep the T-54 a viable battlefield solution. Operators of the T-54, beyond the Soviet Union, Poland, and Czechoslovakia a Czech Republic, went on to include Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Angola, Armenia, Bangladesh, Bulgaria, Cambodia, Republic of Congo, East Germany, Egypt, Ethiopia, Finland, Georgia, Guinea, Hezbollah, Hungary, India, Iran, Iraq, Kurdistan, Israel, Laos, Lebanon, Libya, Mali, Mongolia, Morocco, Mozambique, Namibia, North Korea, North Vietnam of Vietnam, North Yemen, Pakistan, Peru, Poland, Rwanda, Somalia, South Yemen, Sudan, Syria, Tanzania, Togo, Uganda, Ukraine, United States, few examples for opposing force, OPFA, training only, Uruguay, Zambia and Zimbabwe. The Israeli army faced off against the T-54 in several conflicts including the 1967 Six-Day War and the 1973 Yom Kippur War. As a result, thousands of examples were captured and eventually reconstituted into service with the Israeli army against their former operators. These examples were modified with 105mm main guns, a General Motors engine and an Israeli fire control system FCS. Many were retired in the 1980s, some converted to Axerit, armored personnel carriers while others sold to interested parties. Some modified T-54s are still believed to be in Israeli possession. The T-54 tank is believed to have been produced in over 50,000 examples both locally and abroad. Coupled with the production numbers of the similar T-55, the T-54, 55 main battle tank series stands as the most manufactured combat tank in history with some combined totals ranging between 85,000 and 100,000 units produced, sources vary. As such, the T-54, 
55 can also lay claim to being one of the most experienced combat tanks in the history of mechanized warfare, the system seeing action across Africa, in the Balkans, throughout the Middle East and in Asia. Soviet production of the T-54 lasted until 1981, owing to the failings of the newer T-62 which never lived up to expectations for discerning buyers. Poland produced the T-54 until 1979 while Czechoslovakia managed production until 1981.